Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> Cheese Company, makers of parquet margarine and a complete line of famous quality food products, presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. Kraft brings you the Great Gildersleeve every week at this time, written by John Wheaton and Sam Moore. We'll hear from the Great Gildersleeve in just a moment. For between meal lunching, for quick company treats, for all sorts of delightful menu surprises, serve Pabstet, the delicious golden cheese food that's so good in a hundred appetizing ways. Pabstet spreads easily, so you can whip up a marvelous tray of sandwiches in less time than it takes to sit out a hand of bridge. Pabstet slices neatly when chilled, and that's a grand way to serve it with fruit salad or apple pie. And for main dish treats, Pabstet blends ever so smoothly into tempting Welsh rabbits, light fluffy omelets, and cheese-flavored macaroni, egg, and chicken dishes. They're all so wonderfully satisfying when you add Pabstet's mellow cheddar cheese flavor. Remember, Pabstet is a fine energy food, wholesome and nourishing. So look for Pabstet in the familiar round, flat package, and always buy Pabstet when you can. Tomorrow, treat the whole family to Pabstet. Let's join our friend, the great Gildersleeve, who is still suffering the pangs of conscience for his momentary lapse into the arms of Leela Ransom a few days ago. He's also suffering because Eve Goodwin hasn't spoken to him since he confessed his slip. We find him now at home trying to gather courage to telephone her. <laughs> Let's see. I could just pretend there's nothing wrong at all. Pretend the whole thing was a bad dream. Well, Eve, I can say. How have you been? Where have you been keeping yourself? No good. <clears throat> Maybe I could ask her some kind of a question about my campaign. Ask her how to get the women's vote. Oh, no, that wouldn't do. <laughs> Maybe if don't I... Don't be ridiculous, Leroy. This costume is just right. I don't care if it's right or wrong. I won't wear it. You'll have to wear it. Who'll oh, make me? Leroy, what is all this, Marjorie? She's Leroy has to be in a maypole dance. Stop it, stop, stop it, it one at a time. What is this? Leroy has to take part in a maypole dance at Mayor Terwilliger's picnic, and he just... Just a minute. Let's get one thing straight around here. It's not Mayor Terwilliger's picnic. It's the annual outing of Summerfield City employees. The city pays for it. The invitation says that the mayor is paying for the ice cream. Well, the city pays the mayor. What's this about a maypole dance? The school kids have to do it. Some idea of Miss Goodwin. If it's Miss Goodwin's idea, it's all right. I want you to cooperate 100%, Leroy, at least. A maypole dance. That's kid stuff, Unc. It's not kid stuff at all. Why, a few hundred years ago, the maypole dance was a universal custom. The peasants used to dance around the maypole every spring. Grown-up peasants, too. Well, I ain't a peasant. We needn't go into that. If Miss Goodwin's putting on a maypole dance, you'll take part, Leroy, just like the rest of the children. Oh, I wouldn't mind that so much, but I got a special part. Oh? What is it? I have to present the crown to the Queen of the May. They made me want me to wear this little old Fauntleroy suit and to walk up there with a crown on a pillow. And then I have to kneel down and present it to the Queen of the May. Well, I think that's a very... And who do you suppose is Queen of the May? Who? Ethel Hammerschlag. <laughs> oh, Leroy, you make me sick. Ethel Hammerschlag is a very nice little girl. Oh, yeah, the new crowner. <laughs> I not only have to crown her, but then I have to sit beside her on her throne. I don't even want to go to Terwilliger's old picnic. It's not Terwilliger's picnic, and you'll go. And by George, you'll wear that costume. But these pants are too tight. This suit is two years old. It's as good as new. You've never worn it. And today you will. Now go upstairs and put it on. Oh, for corn's sake. Go, Leroy. Okay. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Gillsleeve. What about lunch for the mass picnic? You want hard-boiled eggs? Ye gods, Bertie. This picnic is not the personal property of Mayor Terwilliger. The city is paying for an outing for its employees. Yes, sir. You want hard-boiled eggs? I'm not going. <laughs> Give the children whatever you have. Oh, Uncle Mort, I think you ought to go. And watch Terwilliger swelling around as if he owned the park? No, thank you. I fixed some fried chicken. Mm-hmm. And some nice cucumber sandwiches. Mm. Little mayonnaise on them, Bertie? Uh, just a touch. Then I could put in some of them little baby tomatoes. Mm, delicious. <laughs> I thought I might just whip up a quick devil's food cake, Mr. Gillsleeve, but if you ain't going to the picnic, maybe I shouldn't bother. Well, the children will enjoy it. Besides, it never does any harm to have a cake around the house, Bertie. <laughs> no, sir. Well, I better get with it. Well, I should think you'd want to go to the picnic, Uncle Maud. I should think you'd want to see Leroy as King of the May. I'd rather imagine it. I thought you'd be taking Miss Goodwin to the picnic By George, maybe I should, eh? I might call her up and ask her Why not? I think I will 
Uh, What's the matter? Marjorie, I wonder if you'd mind going out on the porch or something just for a minute. I, uh... <laughs> All right, Unky. I'll leave you alone. Yeah, great. Now. Excuse me, Mr. Gilsey, but have Birdie. you... Birdie, I'm trying to telephone, if you don't mind. Oh, pardon me. Must be something private. Uh, <laughs> like trying to phone from a cigar store. What if she says no? But if I don't call her, how can she say yes? I don't know how I get into these things. All right, Uncle, I'll leave it to you. Is this a costume? Oh, for heaven's sake, I'm trying to telephone, Leroy. Go ahead. Leave the room, Leroy. Hey, there goes Mrs. Ransom. Are you going to take her to the picnic? Certainly not. Well, she seems to be heading this way. Oh, my goodness. Uncle, what's the matter? Nothing. Is she coming here, Leroy? How do I know? Hey, what are you doing behind the sofa? Where is she? Coming up the front walk. Uh, tell her I'm out, Leroy. But you're right here. You wouldn't want me to tell a lie, would you, Unc? You won't be telling any lie, my boy. Tell her I'm out. You don't know when I'll be back. What a character. <laughs> Well, hello, Peavy. Be right with you. I'm just measuring out some mothballs here. Right ahead with whatever you're doing. I just dropped in. Oh, just paying a little visit, eh? That's nice. No, I'm avoiding a little visit. What's that you say? <laughs> little difficulty at home, Peavy. I came down here to avoid it. Oh, well, I know how it is. There are times when Mrs. Peavy and I have our little fallings out. She says it is, and I say it isn't. She says it is, and I say it isn't. And she says it is. And you and... say it isn't. That's right. <laughs> it goes on like that, and by and by she gets impatient. And she says to me, Richard, you're a stubborn old fool. <laughs> but I fix her. Oh, how? I just say to her, well, now, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> and I go take a walk. Uh, Peavy, you're right. You're a stubborn old fool. Well, now, I... Oh, you're joshing, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, it, it works. It's the only way to handle them. When the wife and I have one of our little tussles, I know just as sure as I walk out that door, if I just hold out long enough, she'll give in. Well, that's a good system. There's uh, only one trouble. What's that? I never can seem to hold out long enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're no different from the rest of us. Well, I... Oh, excuse me, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yeah, yeah. If you don't mind my asking, who was the party you came down here to avoid? I'm not mentioning the lady's name, Peavy. I'm withholding that information as a gentleman should. Well, I only ask because I'm afraid I see her coming in the shop now. Uh, Miss Goodwin. Miss Goodwin? I'm not avoiding her. Or am I? <laughs> well, anyway, I guess I'm trapped. Oh, hello, Eve. Good morning, Throckmorton. Long time no see. <laughs> Good morning, Mr. Peavy. He. <laughs> Morning, Miss Goodwin. Nice day. Yes, it is. I'd like it about... It was a little foggy this morning, though, but about 9.30 the sun broke through, so it turned out nice after all. I'd like a bottle of cologne, Mr. Peavy, if you have it. Cologne? Oh, no, there, I'm afraid I'm going to have to disappoint you, Miss Goodwin. Uh, cologne is very hard to get these days. Cologne is very hard to get, yeah. I put in an order back about Christmas time, but all they were able to send me was a... Grocer razor blades, which I, of course, was glad to get, but it wasn't quite... Like that all over. I heard of a fellow in the hardware business who, who, uh, 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 excuse me. Have you anything else, Mr. Peavy? Any toilet water? Oh, yes, I have. I just get my glasses on here. Yeah, I have two here. Now, this one is called Parlement d'Amour. Same as the perfume. It has a very nice smell. Oh, that's very nice. I know that one. I used to buy that for... Oh, it's very nice. <laughs> I think perhaps I'd prefer the other one. What's that? Yes, yeah, she'd probably prefer the other one, Peavy. Let's have a look at that. Well, let's see. This one is called Moment of Passion. <laughs> <laughs> May I smell it? Yeah, let her smell it, Peavy. Certainly. If I can get the stopper out... Stick a little sometime. Here, I'm strong. Let me do it, Peavy. Uh, I got it. Uh, there you are, Miss Goodwin. Oh, that is nice. Uh, care to smell it, Mr. Gildersleeve? Oh, no, no. Whatever's all right with Eve is all right with me. <laughs> a lot of the ladies seem to like this one. 
I think I'll take it. How much is that? That'll be, uh, let's see, it's written on the bottom here. A dollar seventy-five and twenty percent tax, two ten. It's all paid for, Eve. Here you are, Peavy. Oh, no, please, I don't want you to. Here, Mr. Peavy. It's all paid for. But I couldn't think it's of having no it. It's no use, Eve. Keep Rock your money. Morton, if you don't mind. Well, uh, okay. Gosh. Uh, 210 and 5 is 215. 225, 250, and 50 is $3. Thank you. Uh, here's your parcel. Thank you. Goodbye, Mr. Peavy. Goodbye. Oh, Eve, just a minute. Yes? I mean, uh, speaking of the weather, Eve, I mean, uh... Are you going to the picnic today, Eve? I expect to, yes. Some of the children from the school are giving a little performance. Yeah, I know. Leroy, he can hardly wait. Are you going with anybody in particular? I'm going with a group of the teachers. Oh. Well, perhaps I'll see you around. Perhaps. Goodbye, Mr. Peavy. Uh, goodbye. Goodbye, Eve. See you around. A <laughs> uh, little trouble there, Mr. Gildersleeve? What do you think? <laughs> Well, so it goes. Are you going to the mayor's picnic? I don't know. Whole thing is just a political scheme to get votes anyway. If she won't go with me. Well, a lot of things can happen at a picnic. I went to a picnic once. That's when I was a young fellow. I was working for a wholesale drug firm at the time. Dunninger and Holtz, it was. Well, sir, I, I went to this picnic, and who do you suppose I met there? Your future wife. Uh, somebody told you. You did! Oh, did I? <laughs> well, it's a fact. That's the way I met her. Now, who knows? If you go to this picnic today... I've I... already met my future wife, Peavy. Only she won't speak to me. For all I know, she won't be my wife, either. Well, now, I wouldn't say that. Oh, no? You just saw her, didn't you? Saw the way she treated me. Yes, I did. As if I were a skunk. Well, she wasn't very neighborly. <laughs> but, uh, what I always say is actions speak louder than words. Oh? What do you mean? Let me ask you something, Mr. Gillespie. Has she given you back your ring? Why, no, no, she hasn't. <laughs> what are you worrying about then? She'll come around. Peavy, by George. Maybe I will go to that picnic. I would if I were you. After all, what's a picnic without a skunk? <laughs> <laughs> the Great Gildersleeve will be with us again in just a few seconds. Ready, set. Let's go, ladies, for more of those tempting ways to serve Pabstet, the delicious golden cheese food of 100 uses. First course, cream soup. Just before serving, add a generous amount of Pabstet, cut into small cubes, and watch that cream soup hit a new high in appetizing goodness. Next, a main dish, and our suggestion is eggs golden sauce, hard-cooked eggs drenched with the mellow cheddar cheese goodness of Pabstet. Now, a grand salad. Press two halves of a pear together with a tasty center filling of Pabstet and serve with lettuce and mayonnaise. And for dessert, apple pie served with Pabstet wedges. There you have it, menu magic from soup to dessert with Pabstet. And you'll find dozens of other exciting ways to surprise your family with this nourishing, wholesome cheese food. So tomorrow, look for, ask for, and buy Pabstet. Remember the name, Pabstet. <laughs> Now back to Summerfield and the Great Gildersleeve. The city employee's picnic is well underway with games for the children, tests of strength and skill for the gentlemen, and special events for the ladies, all to the strains of the Sanitation Department Band. Just a minute, please. Uh oh, Terwilliger's going to talk some more. Uh, when you've finished your lunches, you'll find ice cream is being served at that table under the tree there. All absolutely free with the compliments of your old friend and our next mayor, Cyrus L. Terwilliger. Oh, that's me. <laughs> the big ham. Eat hearty, folks. Yeah, sure, eat hearty, folks. We'll all come out of your taxes. Well... How about it, Uncle Mort? Shall we have lunch? We better grab some places. Now, Leroy, you'll not grab anything. I wonder if Miss Goodwin's around. Oh, let's invite her to have lunch with us. Yeah. Oh, I see her. Hey, Miss Goodwin! Hey! <laughs> Leroy, that's no way. Well, here she comes. Oh, you hoo Eve. Will you sit here with us, Miss Goodwin? 
I'd love to, Marjorie. Great. I'll tell you what you do, children. Uh, don't you, why don't you go over and eat at that table over there where all the children are and leave Miss Goodwin and me. But, Uncle, I want to eat with Miss Goodwin. Do as I tell you, Leroy. Take your lunch and go over there. There's a nice place right at the end of the table. Well, Throckmorton, I don't think you ought to send them off. Run along, Leroy. You too, Marjorie. Uncle Mort, I'm not a child. Then you're old enough to realize that I have things to say to Miss Goodwin. Now, will you run along? <laughs> well, put it that way. <laughs> I don't know that I have anything to say to you, Throckmorton. I came over because Leroy asked me. Eve, please, you don't have to say anything. Just sit here and share my lunch with me. Really, I'm not hungry. Or I'd have brought my own lunch. Oh, come on, Eve. I've got plenty. I've got loads here. You see, fried chicken. Here are two drumsticks. One for you and one for me. Boo. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Judge Hooker, how you startle me. Uh, won't you join us, Judge? Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. I'd be delighted. But I seem to have mislaid my lunch. I can't imagine... Oh, Throckmorton has lots of lunch. Oh, we're full of lunch. <laughs> Do sit down. Throckmorton would be only too glad to have you share his lunch, wouldn't you, Throckmorton? Sure, old goat. In that case, I'll be only too glad to accept the invitation. Well, this is cozy, isn't it, Gildy? Three's a crowd, Judge. Oh, now, don't say that. Have a drumstick, Judge? Oh, thank you. I seem to be a little hungry today for some reason. You're always hungry. Well, I want to tell you, that's the finest fried chicken I've ever put in my mouth. Wipe your chin. Oh. Throckmorton, a drumstick for you? No, thanks. What? I'm not hungry. Oh, come now, that's nonsense. There's all this chicken here. Go ahead and try it, Gilly. It's marvelous. Thank you, Judge. That's very generous of you. <laughs> but I seem to have lost my appetite. Oh, well, all right. Ah, but you're missing something. Finest fried chicken I ever tasted. I'm glad now that I couldn't find my lunch. You never had a lunch, and you know it. <laughs> you old goat, why don't you eat the paper plate, too? <laughs> oh, here's Mayor Terwilliger. Oh, huh? what does he want? Well, 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 this is a merry little group. Miss Goodwin. How do you do? Judge? Have some fried chicken? No, no, thank you. Oh, there, Gildersleeve. Uh. <clears throat> I'm uh, going to have to ask you gentlemen if I can borrow this lady for a little while. What? We're having a pie-eating contest after lunch. I'm going to require some assistance from the fair sex in judging it, and if Miss Goodwin here will do me the honor... I'd be delighted. Splendid. Oh, but uh, finish your lunch first. I've finished, thank you. Oh, let me assist you to your feet, then. But, Eve, you haven't eaten a thing. Eve, you're not going. Sorry, Gildersleeve, but duty calls. <laughs> you said yourself, Throckmorton, three's a crowd. So I'll leave you two together. Excuse me. This way to the arena. Well, Gildy. And I wind up with you. Like to hold hands, Gildy? <laughs> <laughs> oh, shut up. I've got a good mind to go home, but I'm not going to. I'll show her, and I'll show him, too. I'll show people who's the best man around here. I'm going to enter that pie-eating contest, and I'm going to win it. You do that, Gildy. You just do that. I'm going to. You just show her. You bet I will. You get into that contest and prove to her that there isn't a man in Summerfield who can make a bigger pig of himself than you can. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Could I have your attention for a moment, please? Yeah, what'd I tell you, Judge? He's gonna make another speech. Yeah, just keep your shirt on, Gildy. All you can do is be a good sport. Ladies and gentlemen, friends of Summerfield, I only hope you've all had as pleasant a time so far as I've had myself. Thank you, thank you. I know some of you have had a good time. There's a certain politician, for instance, who enjoyed winning the pie-eating contest. Why, you... Uh, I won't mention his name because he's my political opponent. But I can tell you he's a little on the stout side. I wouldn't say he's exactly fat, but I understand one time he had the mumps for two weeks before he found it out. <laughs> Be a good sport, Gildy. Laugh! <laughs> Uh, now, uh, we're not going to have any speeches today, folks. This is just a social occasion. At the same time, if I may take a moment, I would like to call your attention to one or two facts about the political situation at this time. Now, in the year 1776, what was Summerfield? 1776. In the year 1776, Summerfield was just a tiny village. But in that tiny village were all the seeds of the summer field that was to grow into the great and prosperous city of today. This could go on for days. The glorious tradition of Summerfield began to grow and expand. 
In the year 1812, what do we find? This isn't a speech, it's a filibuster, Judge. The year 1812 saw the establishment of Summerfield's first manufacturing concern. That concern, my friends, was the Summerfield Iron Works, whose sleds and washboards have since made the name of our city famous throughout the country. Is he going to tell about every business in town? We come to the year 1813, and what do we find? We want Gildersleeve! The banner year of 1813! We want Gildersleeve! Hey, Gildersleeve, how about a song? Yeah, give us a song! Yeah, a song! Yeah, a song! Yeah, a song. Yeah, a song. Yeah, well, 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 now, uh, that's an idea. That's, yes, sir. Uh, uh, we've all heard your reputation as a singer, Mr. Gildersleeve. Would you like to croon something for our friends? Well, I'm no professional. So I've heard. Uh, uh, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, I understand that as a singer, Mr. Gildersleeve is a howling success. <laughs> uh, he will now oblige us with a ditty assisted by the street cleaning department band. <laughs> You're trying to put me on the spot, Terwilliger. Well, sing and get off of it. Why, George, I'll... Well, uh, Mr. Leader, uh, do the fellows know Shine on Harvest Moon? Uh, we can try it, Commissioner. Key C only. Oh, fine, fine. Uh, harvest Moon, fellas, and do the best you can. One, two... Shine on... Shine on harvest moon Up in the sky I ain't had no loving since January, February, June or July It's no time Ain't no time to stay Outdoors and spoon So shine on Shine on harvest moon for me and my gal. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Gildersleeve. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if I may resume. We want another song. If I may I'll resume my... I want another song, uh, Commissioner. Yeah, give us another song. Well, I'll do my best, folks. Uh, go ahead and play something, Mr. Leader. If I know it, I'll join in. How about without a song? Without a Oh, yeah, that's very good. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Without a song, the day would never end. Without a song, the road would never bend. When things go wrong, a man ain't got a friend. Without a song. Passion girl with heart so true, one who loves nobody else but you. I want a girl just like the girl that married dear old dad. Oh, thank you. Thank you. All right, Gildersleeve, now get off. Don't you wish I would? <laughs> if I may continue from the point at which I was interrupted, friend. We want another song. Yeah, give us another song. Mr. Gildersleeve has sung eight songs already. I I'm afraid his voice is tired. Are you kidding? I'm as fresh as a daisy, folks. <laughs> uh, how about a song uh, uh, just for the ladies? Oh, yeah, yeah, All right, ladies, your wish is my very command. Uh, Mr. Leader. <laughs> oh, sure, we know that one. Uh, number 18, boys. Oh. <laughs> Love is just a game the two are playing Love is nothing but a game of chance For the one who chooses very often loses Love is never sure to be romantic Danger always lurks in Cupid's arrows But he hasn't aimed at you and me If you are thinking of some other boy to love You may always know that you are free. Well, thank you. Thank you, ladies. Thank 
That's all, Gildersleeve. To Williger, I'll sing just as long as there's a demand for this stuff. You can sing all night for my girl, Commissioner. Well, thank you. Well, you can't sing all night for mine. Well, you can't stop me. Oh, yes, I can. Quiet, quiet. You there, leader. Uh, yes, Your Honor. Take that bunch of straight cleaners home. Or you'll all lose your brooms in the morning. <laughs> You were wonderful. Huh? Wasn't he wonderful, Miss Goodwin? He certainly was, Marjorie. Did you hear the way that crowd cheered? Well, I think he could run for president. Yeah, Uncle's like a regular Sinatra. Yes. <laughs> run along, little boy, run along. I suppose you'd like me to run along, too, huh? Well, the sidewalk isn't wide enough for all of us, my dear. Why don't you and Leroy just walk ahead, huh? <laughs> Come along, Leroy. Give him a break. How much is there in it for me? Leroy. Okay, okay. Uh, that's a boy. Well... Shall we start home, Throckmorton? Oh, if you'd like. <laughs> I was very proud of you this afternoon, Throckmorton. Oh, that's so? Yes. I... I thought you handled a difficult situation very well. Hmm. Nothing much. <laughs> it could have been very embarrassing. You know, when Terwilliger got you up there to sing, he was trying to make you ridiculous. Ah, uh, that was his mistake. I think he found that out. Throckmorton. Yes? Nothing. <laughs> Eve, what's the use of bluffing? I can't be mad at you. Well, I can't stay mad at you. When you sing the way you did just now, well, I don't know, something happens to me. Oh, well, that's because I was singing to you, Eve. Just you. Were you? You think I could sing that way to anybody else? Oh, darling, it's been so long. Uh, <laughs> hey, Uncle, for Pete's sake, come on! Oh, hey! <laughs> oh, let's go, Mark. They'll be there all night. Yeah. <laughs> George, that's pretty nice. Listen to this, Marjorie. Huh? What is it? It's a letter from Maddie Parsons. Uh, she's Frank Parsons' wife. You know, the fellow that reads the meters for us? Oh, yes. What's she writing you about? Well, she just wanted to thank me for keeping him on the payroll those weeks when he was out sick, you remember? Mm -hmm. But listen to this, my dear. She says, By the way, Mr. Gildersleeve, I want to tell you how thankful we both are that Frank went in on the payroll savings plan at the water department. We've always tried to save money, but with one thing and another, it always seemed to slip away somehow. But now we've laid away a war bond every month for 17 months. It'll be a nice little nest egg. Luckily, we didn't have to cash in any of the bonds to pay for Frank's illness. But it was sure nice to know that the money was there in case we did need it. Well, is everybody down at the water department in on the payroll savings plan? Oh, the smart ones are, my dear. Because there isn't a better investment in this whole world or an easier way to save money. Think it over, folks. Good night. on this program was directed by Bob Sweet. This is Ken Carpenter speaking for the Kraft Cheese Company, makers of Parquet Margarine and a complete line of famous quality food products. Kraft invites you to listen in again next week for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. This is the National Broadcasting Company.